London, the theatre capital of the world, home to West End, Broadway and musicals. London's vibrant theatre has been on the scene for over 500 years. Theatre life in London was impacted during COVID-19 pandemic as theatres were shut down. However, just as the lockdown lifted and theatres began to open, a new challenge emerged, the cost of living crisis, creating a major challenge for performers, theatre owners and producers. With the cost of living crisis looming over the UK, the entertainment industry has been majorly affected. The average ticket prices have now risen from 116 to 140 pounds in the last four years. This luxury hobby has seen a downfall in terms of attendance, as people have now started prioritizing necessities over leisure time activities. In February, Equity UK, a performing arts and entertainment trade union, put up a 17% pay claim for several of its members. Although there have been talks between the union and the Society of London Theatre in early February, no action has been taken yet. Raising ticket prices is not the answer to keep theatres running during this phase. With the ongoing situation, the big question is, Will the theatre industry be able to survive, especially after its recovery from the pandemic? We are the West End cast of Phantom of the Opera. We're the West End cast of To Kill a Mockingbird. We're the West End cast of Only Fools and Horses. And we're all standing up for 17! Standing up for 17! 17! To know more about the situation, we spoke to a few theatre performers at the West End musical on how they are dealing with this challenge. I've been performing in the West End for over six years now, but when COVID hit, I couldn't work and fell into debt. I took on two part-time sales jobs, which I still have to do today alongside with West End work, as the one performing job alone just doesn't pay enough to cover the cost living in London and my outgoings. So I'm currently, learn uh, currently planning how to leave stage management, the job I love and have done for a decade because I want to have kids in a year or two and I don't see it being possible if I'm working in live theatre. The hours are relentless and you don't earn enough money to be able to afford childcare, let alone shoes and books. I've worked so hard, I'm really proud of myself and my skills I've built up, but this is the height of my career already, then that's just not sustainable. In response to recent challenges, data from Equity UK, the Performing Arts and Entertainment Trade Union, shows that two-thirds of West End members have considered leaving the industry due to terms, conditions and or pay in the last three years, running the serious risk of a talent drain to the UK's renowned live entertainment sector, especially when more money can be earned in TV and film. Meanwhile, 45% of West End members have a second job, with almost half who say they do reporting, that is this, because their West End pay doesn't cover their living expenses. Due to the effects of the pandemic and the ongoing cost of living crisis and inflation, theatre productions have now started facing a challenge in terms of funding and payment. This has also brought in added pressure to theatre charities as they are now being flooded with funding applications, particularly for those on zero-hour and hourly contracts. Emily Gray, the creative director and chief executive of British Youth Music Theatre, based in Peckham, gives her insights into the challenges that theatre productions are now facing. What exactly do you think is happening to theatres or how bad is it out there for theatres right now in terms of funding? I think um, there are big challenges. I mean, we as a company really kept going through the pandemic and were able to do an awful lot online and to still engage young people. So we kept going. We had government help, which really was great. The Cultural Recovery Fund helped us. What are your responsibilities and what are some of the challenges that you face 
in terms of funding these theatre productions and organisations. Yeah. Um, so I think one of our greatest fears in the theatre industry is becoming elitist and that's particularly so you know um, those opportunities for young people um, becoming exclusive just for those whose parents can afford it um, and so we have to work all the time at building enough funds to make our work accessible um, and in a time where there's such an awareness and a need for diversity and for looking at new voices and making sure we're engaging with all types of people. It isn't on the ground, it isn't in a tree. Hi, my name is Jared Scott. Uh, I'm currently a student at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama. They all come early, in bed by nine. What I have noticed, and when we're talking about, um, you know, financing in the industry, is that our professors, our instructors, our tutors at drama schools, at universities, are not getting what they need to be supported to do their best work and because those people are the ones creating uh and bringing up the new generation of performers um those performers are missing out on key instruction because the uk government can't be bothered to pay an appropriate rate to keep these instructors going and doing their best work so that's where i'm kind of seeing um the arts be affected by financing with the UK government. Thank you. Anissa Butt is a British Indian actress. She has acted in a lot of Bollywood movies and has also been a part of the theatre industry in London for a very long time. She made a debut in a Hindi TV series, Ishan which aired on Disney Channel India. Apart from this, she has also acted in Shuja Ali's Baath Ban Gai and other Bollywood movies like Ye Jawani Hai Diwani and Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. Let's hear from Anissa Bhatt. So, have you guys, like, whenever you have been a part of a production or whenever you have done a show, have you people ever faced challenges in terms of funding your money and all of that? I think for a lot of artists, in, in my knowledge, like people in my circle, and that includes actors, directors, writers, um, they do feel that there is, um, you know, everyone reaches a point where they feel like they need to get a little bit more hands on in the production side, because depending on, you know, the Arts Council and arts funding, um, is is not necessarily the best way, you know, to 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 create your work. So, do you think uh, entertainment and trade unions like Equity UK should also be doing something for not just for West End, but for independent theatre groups as well, per se, or theatre artists all across the UK? What do you think about this? And if yes, like, do you think the equity situation right now with the whole seventeen percent pay claim is it actually going to be beneficial? I didn't feel that there was a trade union quite like equity supporting artists in the way that equity does. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things being part of a union, which, you know, it might feel like they're not really doing much. But when, you know, push comes to shove and when there is an, an actual issue, I think that's where you really see that they are supporting you. American filmmaker Charlie Kaufman once said, there's theatre in life, obviously, and there's life in theatre. And not just one, the lives of several people who are involved in various roles, be it actors, producers, stage managers, directors, the performing arts industry is serving a purpose making the lives of people better by bringing a smile on their faces. As we saw, theatre artists are now struggling with a crisis that has no answers or solutions. Statistics show that 47% of artists have faced difficulties in meeting essential costs during the 2021-22 period. With the hashtag Stand Up for 17 campaign in place, several theatre artists will benefit. Nevertheless, the Society of London Theatre and Equity are yet to come to an agreement. What will be interesting to see is whether a strike action will take place in the next few months, if the negotiations are not successful. <laughs>